So larger multicellular organisms have a small surface area to volume ratio. Therefore, they cannot rely on diffusion to get all the things that their cells need around the whole body. They need some kind of circulatory system in order to transport important molecules around the body. Things like oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, provide nutrients and remove waste products like urea, provide hormones or antibodies. So large organisms tend to have some type of transport system. Now we're going to be looking at humans. In the human circulatory system there are three important components, blood, the heart and blood vessels. So starting with blood, if you take a sample of blood and actually spin it around really, 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 really fast in, a, in a, a machine called a centrifuge, all the heavy things fly out to the end and all the blood will actually separate into two clear, distinct, separate layers. Um, the top layer is actually this very yellowy liquid, it's called plasma, it's kind of straw coloured. And the bottom layer there is all the actual blood cells. So let's talk about the blood cells first. There are three different types. There are red blood cells, uh, there are white blood cells, which are lymphocytes and phagocytes, and there are these little things called platelets. And they are all suspended within the plasma. So red blood cells, they're also known as erythrocytes. They are made in the bone marrow, inside your bones, and their job, their only job, is to carry oxygen around the body. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of them, They're the most numerous of all the blood cells. If you take a cubic millimetre of blood, a cubic millimetre, there are approximately 5 million red blood cells in there. They have a very specific shape, it's called a biconcave shape, it's like a, a jam donut that's been pinched in the middle there. And this gives them a really large surface area to volume ratio so that they can get lots of oxygen in by diffusion. They also don't have a nucleus, and this is obviously very strange for an animal cell, but this allows them to be packed full of a protein called haemoglobin. Now haemoglobin is a molecule that picks up oxygen and can carry it around the body and then give it out again to the cells that need it. When it picks up the oxygen it becomes a molecule called oxyhemoglobin. Then it can give it back out again to the respiring cells and tissues. So red blood cells are perfectly adapted to carry oxygen around the body. White blood cells, uh, their job is very, very different. Their job is to protect our bodies against the invasion of disease-causing organisms, or pathogens as they're known. And there are two different types of white blood cell that um, are involved here. One is called phagocytes, and one are called lymphocytes. The phagocytes do something called phagocytosis, and the lymphocytes produce things called antibodies. So we'll look at those two now in a bit more detail. Now 70% of our white blood cells are actually phagocytes, and they engulf bacteria by this process of phagocytosis. They have the ability to actually move their cytoplasm around a bacteria. Remember bacteria are a lot smaller than animal cells like these phagocytes, and they can actually wrap their cytoplasm around so that the bacteria is moved in inside this little container, as it were, and then into that the cell can secrete special digestive enzymes which then break down the bacteria and destroy it. So you've got these white blood cells that literally patrol around your blood engulfing any foreign bacteria, pathogens that are there. Lymphocytes are a bit different. Only about 25% of our white blood cells are lymphocytes. Now their function is to produce these things called antibodies. Now pathogens have little markers on the surface of their membranes called antigens. And antibodies can stick to antigens and therefore make the pathogen uh, harmless essentially and then it can be destroyed. They can stop pathogens in a number of ways. They can cause the bacteria to actually burst. They can cause the bacteria to actually stick together, lots of them clump together, which makes it much easier for then phagocytes to find them and come and engulf them. Um, and they're, or they can actually neutralize toxins that are being produced by the pathogens. So with a combination of antibody production from lymphocytes and phagocytes coming around engulfing pathogens, it protects us and it, it, it keeps us healthy. Sometimes it takes a few days for your body to, 
to do that, to fight off an infection. That's when you feel poorly, that's when you get your symptoms. But as you know, you usually, you usually get over infections within a few days, and that's because your white blood cells have multiplied and have now fought off the infection. Some lymphocytes can actually develop into what are called immunological memory cells. Not like memory in the brain, not like those kind of memory cells. These are cells that can remember pathogens. And what happens then is that they stay in your blood. And if you get the same pathogen again, maybe in a few years time, then you can recognize it much quicker, make the antibodies much quicker and in much higher concentrations. And so you can fight off the infection much quicker. So if you've got the cold that's going around amongst your friends and you've had that cold and you got over that cold, then you might catch it again next week, but you wouldn't probably even know you caught it again next week because you would make the antibodies against that cold so quickly. You'd mass produce them in a matter of an hour or two and you wouldn't even feel any symptoms. So this is what we call the secondary immune response. We can actually also trick the body into thinking that it's been infected. What you can do is you can give the body this immunological memory by giving you a vaccination with a bit of uh, pathogen in there so that your body learns how to make antibodies against that pathogen. So if you get it for real, then you can go straight into the secondary immune response and you will fight it off really, really quickly. The vaccination could be a couple of things. It could be a dead form of the pathogen. It might be a weakened strain that scientists have, have made weaker, so it doesn't actually really give you any real harm, but it's enough for your body to learn how to fight it off. It could be modified toxins of the bacteria, or it could be the antigens that have been removed from the pathogen, just the antigens that, so that you're, you can make the antibodies against those antigens. Another exciting function of the blood is how it clots. This is very, very important. The part of the blood that does this are the platelets, those little fragments of little cells that we saw earlier. They uh, will form blood clots. This is good for two reasons. Obviously, it stops bleeding, which is obviously important. You don't want to just keep bleeding forever. But also, it prevents infection of the wound. Normally, you have your skin, which protects you from infection from pathogens. It's a really good barrier against pathogens. But if you have a cut, then that means pathogens get straight into your blood and you can get sick very quickly if it gets infected. But if you make a scab, make a clot over the top, it can protect you against those infections. The way they do it is to produce a chemical which causes a plasma protein called fibrinogen to change into fibrin, uh, which is the stuff that then makes the sort of fibers to make the actual clot. Now, as already mentioned, a lot of the blood, 55% of the blood is actually just this liquid called plasma, which is mostly water, 90% of plasma is just water. But this is where all the other things that your blood transports are carried. So your red blood cells carry oxygen, but your blood needs to carry lots of other things around the body. Things like amino acids and glucose and cholesterol and antibodies and hormones and carbon dioxide and lactic acid and urea. Now all these things are dissolved in the plasma and the plasma is what carries all of those things around the body. The other thing the plasma does is to distribute heat around the body, which is very important in maintaining all our metabolic processes and keeping our enzymes working effectively.